Dear friends, uh, I'm speaking to you from Ukraine today, and uh, as you know, this is the country that is suffering the terrific war, terrible war, and uh, this war uh, concerns everyone, and it also concerns academics. Today, I entitled my presentation, Tell Me Who Your Friend Is, and it concerns the academic cooperation with Russia. It concerns moral choices and hundreds of years of having a bloodthirsty neighbor. Here you must know what I mean. With my presentation, I will try to answer the following questions that you can see on the screen. Actually, should Russian intellectuals bear collective responsibility for their country's aggression? Should other countries stop cooperation with Russian academic institutions and individuals? And uh, will hard decisions today lead for a better world tomorrow? Uh, however, uh, the more I look into it, the more I realize that each question generates more and more questions. Russia invaded Ukraine and started genocide of Ukrainian people. It is a fact that no one can deny. However, whatever Russian propaganda may say, the ideas of Ukrainians killing their population and staging the scene of massacre will not fool people who can think critically and draw simple conclusions. However, sociology reports from Russia demonstrate that the vast majority of the population believe anything that is fed to them. In the country where thinking it in itself is a deadly sin, intellectuals cannot freely express themselves unless they are part of the strong oppression machine. If they comply with the rules and despicable ideas, they are privileged. Today, we are speaking about academic community, the people who are to carry the light of truth, development and academic freedom. If rolled into one, those phenomena are opposite to war that brings about life, destruction and slavery. However, on the 4th of March, from the open address of the Russian Union rectors, we understood that Russian academia supported Putin's war. Rectors justified the unprovoked aggression against a peaceful, independent country and urged to support the Russian government in its current war against Ukraine. Universities have always been the backbone of the state. Our priority goal is to serve Russia and develop its intellectual potential. This is the quotation. In a free world, the idea of the university is based on the freedom of thought, critical thinking, creativity, and unbiased scientific method, which is free from authoritarian pressure. In Russia, being the brightest avatar of the totalitarian world, universities and the whole educational system are just obedient tools of the authoritarian regime and its propaganda. The address of the Russian Union of Rectors ends with the words, together we are a great force. These words reflect their way of thinking, which puts the law of force above the force of law which means that power is fear and it should make everyone terrified. Should Russian intellectuals bear collective responsibility for their country's aggression? On the one hand, we realize that there are some academics in Russia who do not support the war in Ukraine. Most of them chose the strategy of leaving it through and keeping silent. The strategy that has actually brought Russia to where it is today. Some representatives of Russian academic community left the country. Some of those who stayed and did not support the war made statements uh, and uh, signed letters that were supposed to condemn the war. The same letter was signed by Russian academics in Finland, as we all know it. We are so used to understanding the responsibility as an individual matter that we cannot even think about collective responsibility for the actions one nation applies to the other. However, in the case of Russian invasion for Ukrainians, things fall under the influence of the atrocities committed by Russians. And for us, 
One of the most important tasks is to bring the Russians to recognize this guilt. When we are thinking about the current situation, we ask ourselves, should other countries stop cooperation with Russian academic institutions and individuals? As I represent the Ukrainian Educational Research Association, I would like to share the recent data we obtained from a survey responses received from 65 Euro members. In answering the question, can Ukraine and the sanctions policy be supported through academic boycotts? In 97% of cases, we see that Ukrainian academics believe that it is a kind of support for Ukraine. 72% of the respondents are sure that cooperation should be cut with all institutions and individuals. 25% say that cooperation is possible only with those individuals who openly condemn the war. Only 3% of the respondents see cooperation with Russia as possible. In further items, the ERA members explain their position. Here they are. In answering the question, what is the impact of the boycotts on the future of science in Russia, the responses are grouped into categories which show the attitudes of Ukrainian academics to future cooperation. They range from indifference to the future cooperation and stressing the importance of the individual choice to the necessity to restrict access to new information in participation in joint projects that can be used for purposes that are incomfortable with UE values. This measure is understood as a very important matter, not only for the world scientific community, but also for Russian science, as it demonstrates the connection between science and morality. The respondents feel deeply offended by university rector's support of Putin and state that Russians should pay the price for it. At the same time, the respondents see that the situation is natural. In a closed society, there should be closed science. They admit that there are scarce examples when Russian authorities respected the opposition opinion. With respect, with deep respect to opposition scientists, the era members say that freedom of thought and expression is not about Russia, unfortunately. Boycotts are helping to isolate Russian science as part of the state system. Soviet in Russian science have always been important elements in the interests of the government, and it has always been used to discredit those with whom they cooperated, and they looked for illegal channels of information for official use. Therefore, the boycotts of Russian science and its representatives contribute to raising the level of inter information security in the world. The question, how can academic cooperation be restarted in the future raised either indignation on the respondents' part or an endless series of conditions, such as academic cooperation is possible only with scientists working outside Russia, or if the Russian policy toward Ukraine changes, if the researcher or institution did not express support of the war, after complete denazification, denuclearization, deputinization, payment of reparations and contributions. Now, it is difficult to predict not only how, but also when it can be restored. As to Russian studies, 74% of respondents think that there is no place for them in school and academic and, and university curriculum. The rest express the following positions. Proceeding with Russian studies is like investigating terrorists and inviting them to assist. To successfully control, control the enemy, you need to know about it as much as possible. 
If the research may help to win, it is worth continuing. If it concerns peaceful aspects of science, you should abandon any ties. If a person is attacked in a dark alley, he will not go that way even knowing that there are good people walking there. You have to know the enemy. It is the only reason to proceed. Russian studies should be so should be so that the world should understand the peculiarities and consequences of Russianism. But more attention should be drawn to Ukraine nowadays. <clears throat> Why not, why not shift the focus of global research community to the Ukrainian language and culture? It might be a springboard for diverse research. The discussion we are to take today is hard, but will lead for a better world tomorrow. I believe it will. The academics fear they won't, but they should not fear. The matter is that fear is the root of all evil. Fear has brought the community with extraordinary humanitarian achievements to the abyss it is found now. And the problem is that it is not even struggling to, it is not even struggling to get from it. Fear has brought it down and keeps it there. If someone would like to join, they may do it, but they should bear in mind that it is hard to get out of the abyss. Even Russians who once did it cannot get rid of Russia's legacy. And one of the brightest examples of it is Solzhenitsyn's design of Putin rebuilding Russia. I have a family in Moscow. I have friends in Russian universities. They keep silent and now and then ask if we are still alive. We are. And if we are alive, we can make choices. And our choice is to say no to the cooperation with Russian academic institutions. As to individuals, it is up to you to decide, but you should be ready to share their responsibility. Thank you for your attention.